Welcome to Race 2 of PWCOM. I am your host, uh, Mike Line. Here at we're set to go racing at Chateau Chalon International uh, Raceway uh, here in France. Purpose built for PWCOM. Uh, starting on pole is the number 4 of Lucia Del Croix with teammate Erzan Zuma Bekov to the outside. Here's we're getting ready to go green. This, lap will be, this race will be 34 laps. And we should expect some pit stops. Here's Zuma Bekov and uh, Lucia Del Delacroix lead them down to the green. Now we should point out something real quick that that the five car of Arthur Leuvenhart's, Leuvenhart's are, is at the back of the field. Uh, he went up, he had an off course excursion during practice, as reg uh, qualifying as Regrain. Um, up the front, it's the two Skytech cars. Here's a barrel down into this corner, the mobile one turn. It looks like it is Erzan Zumovikov with an early lead, followed by um, Sebastian Maynard. Audra Baranowskis and the 20th Nathan McCain. Arthur Lovenhart has already made. No oh no, he's off course! And Arthur Lovenhart has just made this his job even more difficult. He is now in last. So as if things couldn't get worse, Arthur Lovenhart is now outside the points. Meanwhile, meanwhile, the man with the worst luck on the year, Erzan Zumobekov, has gotten around uh, his his teammate, uh, like I pointed out, and has led the first lap. Another team that's doing well that, um, but hasn't really done too well um, all year is. Left lane racing Finland. Or left lane Finland racing, one of the two. Uh, they, uh, Nicholas Lothair-Veen, this is his home race. And he's sitting inside the top 10. And then Fitzwater is sitting just outside in 11th. So a great run by the two um, Finland cars. You know, they also got a redesign, so here's now the Theater Beans getting challenged again. But great showing by the Left Men Finland cars, as I'll call them. And so gonna, he's gonna get repassed for that position, but nonetheless, a good job by Nicholas. Ziki Marley would encounter problems. Uh, here on lot three, he would, Ziki would have to come in. This would be a co this is a costly, costly, costly stop for Ziki Marley. Tough break. Uh, as you can see, it was to fix something fairly minor. Right now the Ford car has the fastest lap. Here she's trying she is trying to hunt down his te her teammate. All Zuma Bekov wants is a good finish. And it looks like he is on his way to do so. Meanwhile, Leuvenhart is not last anymore. He is now second to last. 
this happened last year as well. Um, that number five um, kind of sort of started to zone out here, and this is also where, Long where Longfellow started to come in. And what's happening now? Love and Hearts is now falling, is fading out. Well, meanwhile, look who's up at the front and has taken away second place. That would be Sebastian Maynard, the champion from last year. Living Hearts has shown us here and Rockingham. He is human. He is very, very human. He has made many mistakes um, between uh, on the championship trail. He is basically a reversion of a driver. Uh, well, we all know in love and hasn't had luck at all, as Sebastian Maynard goes off track. That driver I am talking about is Tristan Wilboy. Here's a count around to complete lap 5. I would not underestimate this Longfellow car. Meanwhile, the freaking three cars just posted the fastest lap of the race. Arthur Leuvenhertz would uh, gain another position when after Stuckel would make an error, and as you can see from here, bounced off one of the walls. Um, so now, second to last belongs to Laughter Stuckel. Man, is uh, Arthur Lovenhart's really getting lucky uh, with all these errors and problems that competitors in front of him are having. So it is clear he does not have the speed. This just in, I'm hearing that Sebastian Maynard did, in fact, top the lap times I had Zuma Vapov. The young gun is proving his worth here for um, Longfellow White House. We're only on lap 6, and he's proving that he could potentially win this race. Here's a driver to handle a lousy starting spot, Stan Thaber, um, is marching his way through the field. Solid effort by that number 10 team to get that team car all tuned up and ready to go for the race. That car was not looking good when they rolled it off the, um, the hauler. Andre Baranowskis would have issues and would have to pit as well. This will give Arthur Leuvenhertz a uh, another spot, which puts Arthur Leuvenhertz in the points with one point. That is three cars with issues today. These teams really need to get prepared when they race. Here on lap 17, Erzan Zumabekov would surrender the lead and head to the pits. Um, this would give the lead to uh, Sebastian Maynard for the time being. 
The very next lap, Sebastian Maynard would head to the pits. We're gonna see where he comes out. Using our using our Acer on, on board, we will figure out where he is going to end up being spat out onto the track. Here is your son Zuma Bekov and Zuma Bekov will not get the lead. New leader in the one car of Sebastian Maynard. I, I'm listening to the radio communication and saying he's not happy with this team strategy. Here's Enzuma Bakov going to try a pass on the one car. Can Erzan do it? No. He's going to try. No, he cannot. Erzan's going to stay second for the time being. It is go time, and I think everyone notices that um, um, there would be a wreck here. Um, hard hit by... Um, by both uh, Fitzwater and Hirano. Both were looking at good finishes. And now he is done. On literally the exact same lap, uh, the two unluckiest drivers on the year, Stanton Faber and Johan Art, would get together and their cars would hook together and they both would fall out because of it. They were just battling hard. I'm pretty sure Erzan Zimobakov has this one last charge for Sebastian Maynard. And I'm pretty sure that is it for uh, Erzan Zumabekov for this race. Uh, I'm hearing on the radio that the tires are pretty dead now, uh, making that charge. I'll be shocked if he can hold on to uh, to this next visit to uh, second. Because I'm also hearing that Lucia Do Croix's tires are just coming in. Yeah, yeah, as you can see, Erzan's tires are pretty worn. He, he just slid into the gra gravel. Remember what I said about, um... About Della Croix's tires coming in? They're in. And Croix has caught up to the three car and is faster but the problem is is that uh, Erzan Zuma Bekov will not yield to anyone and now he's going to race his teammate hard you don't want to battle through there we just saw the results of what happens if you battle through there 
Now, don't raise your teammate hard. Lucia Della Croix got um, nearly got uh, taken out by by uh, Zuma Bekov. Oh man, that was really close. Uh, by Zuma Bekov at uh, Karyala, Karyala, and well, we didn't penalize the three because he he was the only one taken out in that situation. So I would not race Delacroix like that. But now, does Delacroix have enough time to catch up to Sebastian Maynard? Delacroix certainly has the tires to do so. On the flip side of the of Zeke Marley's bad day, Joshua Hyatt would almost take out the 22. Great job by uh, Midnight Lefairy Veen to not only get through that and save it, but to not hit those sand barrels. However, that would drop Leclerc Ravine from a career best 7th to outside the top 10. So, Sebastian Maynard has just started his last lap. As you can see, he's catching Fitzwater. But, I think we know Fitzwater's lap car is very treacherous. And, we all know the risks you take when you, uh when you uh, decide to try a lap in. We'll watch the whole field pretty much roll by. Uh, the, not, the, the four does not have enough time to catch up to the one. Like I said, we'd watch the whole field roll by and here they come. Here comes Sebastian Maynard off the last corner. Only Fitzwater is the last person to cross the start finish line before Sebastian Maynard takes his first ever win this season. And a great job by Sebastian Maynard to not freak out when when he was um, behind Urzan Zumabekov. Zumabekov is one of the uh, other people here, uh, one of the legends. So it must be a confidence booster for Sebastian Mayer to get his first win in that fashion.